Hey guys, we're here at the shop today. We're gonna to talk about the Supra. I wanted to thank you guys for watching the off-season refresh where we rebuild the motor, we get the car ready for the dyno, we go to the dyno, and then we go test it at the track. If you hadn't got to see all those, you could check out our playlist to get caught up. Today, we're gonna to talk about the parts on the car and where they are in the car which parts I use. If you are interested, you could use the same part. If you guys have questions on something I don't go too in depth and too in detail about, just comment below and I'll get on, get on there and I'll answer them for you because we're gonna try and keep this short and to the point. I could go on for hours and hours if we get too in depth. So first we'll start with the motor and we'll work our way back and um, we'll even lift the car up later and we'll look at the transmission and the suspension and we'll talk about everything on the comp car so that when the car is out there performing um, and you guys are watching in Formula Drift, when we do start back up, you'll have like a better understanding of what's going on and you know how everything works. So first, let's start with the motor. It's a 2JZ motor. You guys probably already knew that. Came stock in the Supra. This one has been stroked, so it has a Brian Crower 3.4 stroker crank. I run the lightweight stroker crank. Um, that's deep down inside there. We can't see that unfortunately, but use your imagination. And then we run Carrillo HD rods, which are good for over a thousand horsepower up to like, I think 1800 if you're gonna push them, but I just kind of overbuild it so that I can be really mean to it. And so the HD rods, and then I run custom 11 to one compression CP pistons, which Probably wouldn't be good for your everyday use, but they help spool the turbo. They help with like quick response and they're really good for what I'm doing. And I run Ignite race fuel, so there's no issues with the high compression and putting a turbo on top of the high compression. Going into the head, we use all GSC valve trains, springs, valves, everything, and GSC S1 cams. 268 cams, not the highest lift at all, but I'm just trying to do good power band for drifting, so. It's super functional and over the years I've kind of like dialed in the pieces in the motor just to work exactly how I like and it's very reliable. If you went a little deeper, I forgot to talk about a couple little things, but we still run a stock GTE motor with oil squirters and we run ACL race bearings. Always run Torco 2050 SR5R 2050 motor oil and I've never once had an issue with a single JZ motor that I was like built and been running myself. Um, never blew up a motor. Good success with the stock oil system. I do modify the pump sometimes a little bit or the, the routing of the oil system, but I run a stock wet sump. There's no dry sump. So now you guys know if you were wondering. Okay, let's go to the hot side of the motor. So I run a Borg Warner EFR 9274. That is the numbers that they use is the 74 hot side, so 74 millimeter on the hot side, which is this guy right here. The front side is 72 millimeter, so it's slightly confusing. 9274 doesn't mean it's a 92 millimeter. That's the turbo we use, super responsive, really like it. Check it out if you guys want. It's pressure is managed by two wastegates. I run uh, TurboSmart Hypergate 45s, so it's a divided manifold and each section of three runners go out to their own wastegate. So that's been working great for us. That's the setup we use. And we do run a blow off valve. It's the recirculation one by TurboSmart. So it just recirks back into the Borg Warner housing. It's called their compact. Then if you move over this way, I run a Hypertune intake manifold with Dietchworks 1500 CC injectors through the Hypertune rail and that's managed by a TurboSmart fuel pressure regulator. I run the FPR 1200, and we feed that with two pumps. There's a, I run a radium surge tank. We'll check that out in a little bit, but there's one feed pump for the surge and then two fuel pumps. We're always good on fueling, and it keeps us good pressure all the way up to 950 horsepower. And then we started running a nitrous outlet nitrous system. It's a dry shot system. It sprays in right here before it's just for spool. So it helps us get low in torque and spool on the turbo. So it's like fully spooled before 4,000 RPM now. When the nitrous is on, it's 100 shots. So it's just, just to get us going. But that's helped with the response. If you look in here a little bit closer, you can see we run the KRC power steering. So we make a kit and this is the pro kit, the KRC 
PS3, which is their Pro Series 3 pump, and it goes through. I kind of changed up my um, reservoir, and I have a regulator back there that's going to help the pump live a little bit longer. If you want to know more on that system, there's a video on it, so check out the link to that video. Going back into the front of the motor, I do run an ATI damper on there so that I can attach this KRC power steering setup. Um, moving up, you see these water inlet outlet. That's something pretty cool that we came out with a year ago, or a little over a year. So this replaces your water pump and it lets you still utilize all your front plastics covering up the timing belt. I left this part exposed so we could talk about this, but everything would be covered when you're on the racetrack and it also holds your alternator there. So that's a Rad Industries part. We're pretty pumped on that. That's your water inlet. This is your water outlet. We make two versions of that. That's for the race car version there. So it doesn't recirculate to anything. It's just straight out of the motor. Also, if you look close, you can see the Rad Industries alternator. It's the Rad 160. We developed that after many years of issues with another brand of alternator and then we came out with that. That's the first one we ever developed. It's four years now on the car. Gonna see how long it'll go. If you're looking at some of the hoses and fittings, I use only XRP race crimp fittings and hoses on my car, so they're all matching. Details matter to me, so I gotta make everything match. We got the Treadstone intercooler up front. This is a 1245C, which is 12 by 18 by four and a half, so it's good for a thousand horsepower. It works just right for what we're doing and keeps our intake temps down. And if you look on that side, we have a cold air intake tube going down there for the AEM intake filter. That's the dry flow with the filter sock on there. Check those out, those are really cool. Keeps everything dry if you were to splash anything on there or whatever, that's what that extra sock is for. All the intercooler piping is connected with HPS silicone couplers and T-bolt clamps. So one thing I did forget to mention is I run NGK Iridium. Spark plugs, I run the eight series. The eight for like the heat is the eight. So it'd be, if you wanted to get real technical, the part number is like BKR8EIX. If you look at all the heat shielding products, stuff like this, that's made by a company called PTP Turbo Blankets. We work closely with them. We could utilize all their cool products that they have that will keep the heat either held in where you want it held in or keep it away from surrounding things so it doesn't you know burn up a hose or your turbo doesn't you know cook something else or like your hood or what, whatnot so they make a lot of cool stuff too then the whole engine is managed by a pro efi 112. we could start moving to the back of the car and we'll check out what's in maybe the cockpit real quick and then we'll look at the radiator and the fuel cell in the back of the car so let's take a quick look inside the car. So I have the Sparco circuit seat, Sparco prime harness, Sparco wheel. And then if we were to turn on the ignition, this is a MoTeC display, it's a C127. We were able to use display creator. Cody Phillips did that. So we have different pages that show us different stuff that we wanna look at. Like for example, this will show us all the amps that the different accessories would use, fans, pumps, things like that. And then when you need to like relax right before a run, you get to watch some slow-mo drifting. Puts you in the right mindset. <laughs> then this is kind of the screen I'll use most of the time when I'm on the track. It'll just show me my gear, the crucial temps, and if pumps come on or fans come on, it'll have little icons of how many fans are pumped. So it just lets me know what's going on. Over here we have the Samsona sequential, pull back for upshift, push down for downshift. To go to reverse, you'd go like that, see how it went into reverse, neutral. There you have it, handbrake right here, it's an Aero 1, we have a radio. Okay, so this is the Motec keypad. This does replace all the toggles that you could have in your race car controls and it goes to a PDM, power distribution module, so there's no fuses and or relays, it's all through the PDM, controls all the accessories and whatnot. So like if we did want to trigger a fan, Pro EFI is going to communicate with the PDM and it will do it on its own when it needs to cool the car down. But if we wanted to do it manually, you can override it right here. Turn a fan on, turn the other fan on, turn both fans on, turn them off. You could do that with your pumps as well, your water pump. 
But things like a headlight, you're just gonna have to turn them on right here. It's a pretty cool little pad, but there's like, you know, you see the one light that's low beams, then high beams, then both, and then turn them off. With like nitrous, you would have to arm it right here. But the other stuff is all automated and just does it through the Pro EFI 112 communicating with the PDM. That pretty much sums up the controls of the inside of the race car. That's pretty much it. It's a race car, it's simple, it has what it needs. Let's go check out the back. Okay, so let's talk about the back of the car. So we have the CNR dual pass radiator back there. I had that one custom made just to fit within the frame rails. There's a lot of custom stuff back here, but let's just talk about the parts that you guys could run on your car if you want, or something you could be familiar with that you could look up. So down in here, we have a fuel safe cell. This is the Enduro cell that has the E85 compatible bladder. And then we have the Radium FCST. This has three pumps in it. Like I had mentioned before, it has one pump over here that's gonna feed into the surge. And the surge tank is inside there, located right here. And then there's two feed pumps and one will be on all the time and the other one gets triggered when it sees 10 pounds of boost or more and so then it's two pumps when i'm in boost or when i'm doing like a big pull on the track and then um right here you have your cool suit ice chest box so normally they're white we painted this one with black with a little bit of flake in it it's a little dusty because i was at the track with it but um to feed the cool water through these tubes into the shirt i'm wearing when we're on the track so i could stay a little bit colder and not sweat so much. We have the radium expansion tank over here and that bleeds off all the bubbles come off of there, go in there, recirculates back into the Mazir water pump, which is underneath of this tank here. So you won't be able to see that unfortunately, but it's a Mazir 336S water pump. That's pretty much all you see back here. There's some tubing structure, the rear bash bar, and then the back of the Supra back here. If you guys hadn't seen a close-up, the back of the car is just a fiberglass plug that we had made so that if you need to, you can like bury the whole back of your car in a wall. We all know what happens with drift cars. So then you're not gonna bend your whole frame. You're just gonna break this piece of fiberglass and it's very lightly held on here with some through bolts there and a couple little arms back here. Pretty simple, but you want it to be simple so you can repair it quickly if need be. That kind of is the whole like front to back of the car, but what we didn't talk about is suspension and you guys want to see underneath it. So let's raise the car up a little bit and then we'll take a look at the front and back suspension and sway bars, arms, such stuff like that. And then we'll look at the underside of the car and then that shows you my FD car. Okay guys, so we're underneath the car now. Let's take a look at the rear corner. So we run the Reinhardt three-way coilovers. So it has high and low speed and your rebound adjustment. I run a 6K Swift spring on there. It's covered up with a dust boot, but this is a coilover, keeping it clean with the dust cover. On the axles, it's drive shaft shop, 2000 horsepower axles connected to the Winters quick change differential. It's the 10 inch independent with the bigger spline and the larger lower shaft. So all the stronger components, so it's good to go for formula drift and pro drifting, how much grip and power we're putting through it. If you look here, I have Megan Racing lower arms, and then I have a custom upper arm that's similar to the old battle version one, but he stopped making that, so I've been kind of making my own arms on the top now. This Megan Racing lower arm, I modified a little bit to hold on to our Speedway style sway bar that we have back here that allows us to fit everything with the Winters diff because the OEM style sway bar would no longer fit. You can see all the, that was done on a stock subframe. We did, we modified it here at the shop to be the best version of it that we could think of. We've clearanced, um, if you look under here, we clearance it for the axle so it has more articulation. If you squat down or you come off a bank really hard, you're not gonna hit the axle onto the subframe. The way we built it, it's been pretty strong and it's easy to get the winters in and out. So if we head towards the front of the car, see we have the three and a half inch aluminum drive shaft and then the, the Samsonas trans up here. That goes through 
This, this is now the SFI bell housing, but here's a closer look. We made this adapter plate to utilize the same ACT triple disc clutch without having to make any changes to our input shaft or even changing the trans mount this season. Underside of the engine, stock OEM wet sump pan and everything, but here's our WiseFab front lock kit, steering angle kit, Reinhardt three ways up front with a 20K spring on there, still covered up by the dust cover. We had to create our own little way of making uh, the front sway work. So we have this collar that we developed with a machinist and it just clamps on there and then lets us have the sway bar connect directly to the coilover because there's no spot to have it. Kind of like the rear, we had to think of a way to make it work. And then we modified it a little bit this year, but it's pretty much how we used to have. That's kind of the underside of the car. If you guys have questions or I forgot to point out something that you're looking at as we walked under the car, feel free to ask me and I'll answer the questions for you. We didn't talk about this. I got the clear view filtration system that lets you look through a little glass window. You could see your oil. I don't know how necessary it really is because you could always cut your filter open, which we still will do, but I kind of wanted it, so <laughs> we got it. It's pretty cool. So we just came back from a test day. We had the 2019 black Gram Light Rays 57CRs on there. But for this season, we're gonna run the Pearl White 57CR. Super cool, excited about that. Cool thing about the white is it is gonna pop on the livery that we did for 2020. All the vinyl from Montreux Supply and the printing from Boss Printing. It's gonna look just right, excited about that. All right, that's the Supra. Hope you guys enjoy it. And now when we're out on the track, you have a closer look at the underside, the driveline, all the above, and you know what's going on more. Let me know if you wanna see more stuff like this, or maybe you wanna see similar thing on Baby Blue, we could do that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you guys later.